I'm doing good, thank you. How are you doing? Good. Um, you're showing your movie here at Sundance, like a secret screening, if you will. Uh, when did you found it, find out that you all were going to be I found out about this about two weeks ago, but I didn't know that it was going to be a secret screening. It's what I'm reliably informed is called the Founding Screening, which is a thank you by the festival to the local people of Park City. And thank you, they do like a secret screening to the town in here, so it's talent involved as well. Uh, so I think it's, it's kind of a big deal, but hopefully it's exciting for those people who get to see something first, with the talent attacks, and they get to see them. People here live in person, which is no bad thing. Um, so I think it's a bit of a clue for us, because, you know, we're part of the festival, but we're not. We're just going to ask five as well. I don't think I think we're going to be happy when I come out. But no, no, it's, it's you, it's you. Yeah, and, and talent as well. I hope you will look at it. I really enjoyed your movie. It's a real uplifting, feel good film. Uh, talk about that film and what you were going for with the film. That's what we were going for. That's what I was going for. I mean, I think that what I initially felt when I read the clip is that. He was looking to tell a story of a uh, guy who achieved something great, like, like Cameron Lincoln. And at the time, everyone kind of regarded him as a bit of a joke. And I think that it was an opportunity as a filmmaker and storyteller to kind of turn that head a bit and show that he made a different life, but also create something that allowed people to go and feel good about failure, if you see what I mean. Because, you know, okay, he came last, so you could deal with the failure. But the truth is, on a, on a, on a personal level, he achieved what he wanted to. He never said he was going to go. He just says right at the beginning, I want to be an Olympian. And that's what he goes out and does. And I think there's an element for a lot of us that I know certainly true for me is like, maybe hey, something I always wanted to achieve in my life that I maybe didn't. So I have a tendency to feel like a failure. But the truth is that it's never too late. And there's always something you can do. And if you believe in it, then you can get there. And I think that's a good, simple, honest message and stories to be told, and, and, and kind of important that. A bit about that, if you're telling a story based on something that really happened, a real person, talk about uh, telling the line between uh, being honest with what really happened and but you're still making a move. Yeah, I mean, I think you're hitting the nail on the head. I mean, what I've said is that it's a fictionalized version of a true story. And what I mean by that is that, you know, we're the key to your... Being entertaining with it, and as a documentary is entertaining, but it's it's an entertaining kind of way. What I set out to do was take the elements and the essence and some of the facts and weave them into a good credit story that an audience can see and go with for an hour, forty minutes at the piece of entertainment. And, and you know, some of the facts are slightly muddled or played around with, but they are still nevertheless a piece part of what it went for. And so, um, some things may not be strictly accurate, but in terms of the essence of what we're saying about how he slept on floors and he had no money and he had nothing but his own determination, uh, they are very true elements of it. There's certain financial restrictions that we have. You can go to Calgary, for example. They don't do each other very well. It simply doesn't exist. So we have to create our own version of that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a perspective. How long was your first time to to finish the film? Uh, yes, of course, the first time for assembly was going to be probably about two, three, two, three, two, three. And so we're down to one foot, which is the more manageable thing. Because, you know, of course, you, you know, you can say to yourself, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a minute of age and you've got, you know, three pages. Then it could be nice to finish the film. Just get on set and they start inventing and creating and lots of other elements start playing through the day to day making the film. But I like to encourage and want to have the option on as well. So there's stuff that's not in there or stuff that's kind of adapted from the original shot. But uh, it's been a natural part of the process, but you've got to get it down to a manageable level. What did you start to do? Would you commit a lot of scenes or would you be taking up the scenes you have? There's some things that you need, yeah, or some things that take a move to other places and tighten it up. It's really a matter of tightening work here. Um, and uh, there, there's one sequence that there was a party scene that maybe fell by the wayside, or other little strange story that, that 
that at the end of the day, we're distracting from Eddie's journey, because it's really Eddie's journey that we're, we're talking about and thinking about and experiencing. So, yeah, it's about being aware of what the story that I've been telling and, and where do I need the audience to be at this moment. You know, some, some elements of the story will go down what I call a cold sack, which means that they don't know And I don't want to do that to so I want them to kind of have some sort of resolution that we move forward. Um, you work with one of the most difficult producers in all of the business, which is uh, Matthew Vaughn. He's a real teaser, very difficult, he's never made a movie before, really untapped. Um, talk a little bit about having to work with that, you know. Well, it was, it was a hand, hand-holding experience. I needed to really guide him through the whole process. And he was grateful for it, you know, as you would expect. Fortunately, 20 years ago, I was here in Sundance with him when he was a young, aspiring producer who's not done much. He met this guy, Guy Ritchie, and they were, you know, dabbling in the film game. Uh, but fortunately, I've maintained a relationship with him over the last 20 years. So when he, he found Eddie and came to me, uh, we had a great deal of that allowed us to really get on the plate so very, very quickly. And the truth is that Matthew is quite an accomplished filmmaker in his own right, as you know. And this is my third film as a director, and I'm going to just an actor. So it was great to have that ally and friend to be there to, you know, shout at me when he felt I could do better and, and pat me on the head when he thought I'd done well. So, you know, and it is a friend relationship at the end of the day. And I have great admiration and respect for him. I'm not as good as the girl. He's just a child, so. Uh, what did you learn from friends and family screenings? Or even Matthew Vaughn, who showed you the closest friends and family screenings that they didn't have to finish them? Uh, interesting. I, you know, it's, it's finding the moments that, that really were sort of landing in a way that even I hadn't anticipated. Because what you do is when you get into those screenings, you tend to start watching the audience rather than the film. I've seen the film plenty of times, I know it's going on the screen, what I want to happen. But then it's about impacts that I wasn't even maybe aware of that. I didn't realise it was funny. I think what I started to learn was that we were probably better at leaving it alone because it was already in a very strong place. Um, it's already in a very strong place, and, and that um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's the kind of with what we're learning. And of course, there's this stuff that grows in tight, and that maybe you feel the audience starts to just you lose the audience to certain points, so maybe you just tighten things up. But we did test screen very early on, and the response then was really, really strong and positive, and the film wasn't even completed. I mean, a couple of other things that we were thinking of adding just to tell the story in a bit more of a clear way, and we still scored very high. So we were like, okay, let's, let's just be calm, let's back up and not panic, and let the film do what it's doing. On that note, I want to say congratulations. Super happy for you. Look forward to what you're going to do next. Thank you very much.